Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the Fenty Skin Ease Blurring Skin Tint. Now the claims for this product sound amazing. We've got that it instantly blurs, it's hydrating and gives a diffused effect, it smooths out texture, and my favourite claim is that it says it's humidity proof, sweat proof, and transfer resistant. If you're new here, I sweat a lot through my mustache and it ruins my makeup. So the sweat proof claims are like <laughs> amazing to me. Okay, so the facts. This comes in 25 different shades. It has a light to medium coverage and it comes with 32 mils of product. In Australia, it retails for $46 and you can pick it up from Sephora. And in the US, it's around $30. I went for shade number one. So this is described to have cool undertones and it says it will work for their foundation shades from 100 to 130. In the past, when I've tried out Fenty foundations, I have picked up the shade 110. Even though Fenty has like this huge shade range in their other products, I could still never find like the exact right shade for me. Now I found that this shade one was too light for me and the undertone was pretty off. I really don't know how this is meant to work for such a variety of shades, like 100 to 130. There's a lot of shades in between there and I'm very, very fair and this was too fair for me already. So I don't know. But then I looked at getting the shade number two, but it says that that is suited for shades 140 and 150. So too dark. Now, I really, really wanted to love this product. It sounded amazing, but it was just disastrous for me. It applied nicely at first. I did use a sponge to blend it out and I lightly set it with powder. It was nice and lightweight on the skin. It blended really easily and it did build up a touch. For reference, I have combination skin, so I get a little oily throughout my T-zone during the day and my breakouts tend to be quite dry. I'll insert some shots of me applying the foundation now, and as you can see, it does have quite a light coverage. I feel as though I have been enjoying more light to medium coverage products lately, and it also left a really nice glow to the skin, which just looks super healthy and hydrating, but unfortunately, that didn't last long. Around my nose, it did look a little dry. I also had some breakouts there, so it was clinging a touch to those. And you can see the difference in the undertone from my face to my neck and my chest area. It just looks quite off. So on my first day trying this out, I did wear it for seven hours and it looked all right in the morning, but by the time I finished work and got in the car, I looked in the mirror and I just, I could not believe this is how I was getting around at work looking. <laughs> it looked okay on my cheeks, but around my nose, my chin, and the perimeter of like my hairline here, it was breaking up and it looked so dry. It had creased like crazy around my eyes. And this isn't a problem I usually face. I used my normal primer, concealer, and powder like a combo that I love and use all the time. So for it to crease like that around my eyes, I just, what was going on? Considering it looks so glowy and hydrating when you first apply it, I was quite shocked to see how matte and dry it looked at the end of the day. As you can see from these pictures that I'm inserting, it just was not looking good and I was not impressed. So even though my first time wearing the foundation was not a good time, I still decided to try it out another two times at work and it it just didn't get any better. So unfortunately, this product is a no-go from me. I'm really bummed about this actually because the claims were literally music to my ears. I would love to hear your thoughts on this product. Have you tried it? How does it work on your skin? What is your skin type? Leave a comment below so that other people watching can kind of get a feel for that. I have seen very mixed reviews online, so I think it's just one of those products that works for you or it don't. There's no in between. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into some swatches and you can check out the shade of the Ease Drop compared to some other foundations in my collection. First up, we have the Fenty Ease Drop in the shade one. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110 Porcelain. Here we have the L'Oreal True Match in 0.5N Porcelain. This is the MAC Studio Fix Foundation in NC10. And this is the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop in Light Porcelain. I'd say this one here by L'Oreal is my favorite match 
out of all of these. Well, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. I have an entire playlist dedicated to foundation reviews, so I will link that down below in the description box if you want to go and watch some more. Make sure you come and follow me on Instagram if you aren't already, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye. By the way, if you're new here, there's just this fly that always decides to wake up and fly around the room when I'm filming. Like, can you leave me alone, please? So if you see him buzzing through the frame, I'm terribly sorry, but I got no control over him. Okay, so the facts, this comes in 25 shades. Oh my God, this fly, seriously. Just get out, go away, I'm busy. Sweat proof? Why, why are you doing this? To oh, I touched it.